Lionel Messi, the legend of La Pulga. South America, a land of mystery, allure and romance, at least in the world of football. Uruguay might have won the first two editions of the World Cup, but it's two countries in particular, Brazil and Argentina, that so often catch the eye. Whether it's with their performances on the pitch or the talents they produce for clubs abroad, you can't help but keep an eye on those nations. Argentina went on to produce some of the greatest playmakers in the history of the beautiful game, with Diego Maradona being the first legendary figure to cut his teeth. Having led the Albi Celeste to the World Cup in 1986, he had been widely regarded as the best his country had ever produced. That was up until the emergence of another Argentinian known to pull the strings, Lionel Messi. So much is his importance that you simply can't avoid his name when discussing the game of football. Messi or Ronaldo is a question that is constantly posed to even the most inexperienced of football supporters. Such is his impact on the game, both in terms of on the pitch and off it via endorsements, that you just can't ignore his sheer brilliance. While Messi is known most for leading his nation to the World Cup title in 2022 over France and his time at Barcelona, a trophy leaden spell, there is much, much more the legendary figure than just that. His story is one that cuts much deeper and is a tale of never giving up despite what your critics have to say. Messi's beginnings in the game were born in Rosario following his birth in June of 1987, on the 24th to be exact. He quickly became entrenched in the game, playing with his friends and brothers, all of which seemed to tower over him. Adding to the fact that Messi was younger than those around him was the fact that he had a hormone deficiency that caused him to be much smaller than them. This deficiency caused his growth to be hampered, forcing his parents to turn to nightly growth hormone treatments for the youngster in an attempt to get him closer to a baseline level. The burden to them was immense, particularly financially, but there was a path forward despite the hardship that it posed. It would turn out that Messi's condition was actually a blessing, as it paved the road for him to end up in the Braugrana eventually. The solution? Messi was offered a trial with Barcelona, and the club agreed to pay for his treatments, making it an easy decision for his parents to make. Messi and the entire family would move across the ocean to Spain, representing a major change. The move was not one that backfired, not in the slightest, as his immense talent became obvious to those in charge of the club. This was merely the beginning of the immensely successful career of the man that would go on to be called La Pulga, translated in English as The Flea. One might ask the question, why on earth Messi was called La Pulga or The Flea? The answer is rather simple. It's because he was, has been, and remains an absolute pest on the pitch, darting his way through defences with aplomb with his dribbling and his vision. With his low centre of gravity coupled with his stature, he has a unique playing style that sets him apart from the forerunner Maradona that we mentioned earlier. Though certain characteristics are shared between the two, it would be wholly unfair to simply label Messi as a carbon copy of his compatriot. Messi stands out from Maradona in the dribbling department, largely due to the fact that much of Messi's career has been played out on the right wing. This forced Messi to exert his influence on in games through his pace and dribbling, which was not always the case with Maradona. Maradona did have those tools in his locker, but he played more centrally with an attacking midfield role being most common. Messi had the luxury of being surrounded by Xavi, Iniesta and Busquets to name a few. So for a good chunk of his career, he was able to play on the wing and exploit defence's weaker points. On top of that, the next big factor to differentiate Messi and his influence in Maradona is the goal-scoring exploits of the pair. Maradona was certainly an effective finisher but he racked up nowhere near the number of goals that Messi has. Part of this could be blamed on an evolution of the game, 
There is no doubt that Messi's finishing ability was otherworldly when compared with both Maradona and the vast majority of his peers. Let's just look at Maradona's time at Napoli. In seven seasons with the Italian club, he managed to score 81 goals and 188 appearances. That's not a bad number by any means, but it pales in comparison to what Messi did at Barcelona. Messi is much more rapid with the ball in the feet, but I am much more potent, much more potent with the feet. Across 17 campaigns, the diminutive maestro bulged the net an eye-watering 474 times in 520 matches. Those outlandish numbers show that his finishing was not only top draw, but also that he was extremely consistent as well. On top of that, you could also argue that he has also established a knack for more effectively setting up his teammates as well. Whether through his dribbling, simply attracting defenders due to his immense ability, or passing with deadly precision, Messi has shown more than enough tools to unlock the opposition in ways Maradona couldn't have dreamed of. Another major influence facet of Messi's game is his dead ball capabilities. While Messi's ability in this area is perhaps a bit overrated, it must be said that he has come through in big time moments when on the ball on set pieces. Putting his name up there in the same company such as Zico and Janino to name a couple. With his technique, he's always going to be a threat. So it's no surprise whatsoever that he finds the back of the net as often as he does from 18 yards plus. Messi started his career at the ripe old age of 5 with his hometown club of Grandoli and he would then move to Newell's old boys 3 years later before eventually moving to Spain to suit up for Barcelona's youth academy at 13. Messi looked like he would be a one club man from that point on spending 21 odd years with the Catalan giants before political and financial squabbles forced him out. He would land at PSG in France, joining the likes of Neymar and Kylian Mbappe for the Parisians in what would ultimately end up being a disappointing two year spell. Messi has now departed European football, plying his trade at Inter Miami in the United States MLS where he has already had an enormous impact both on and off the pitch. While he has definitely been a major figure at every club he has ever featured for, his time at Barcelona is the highlight of Messi's career. While there, he was part of a golden generation that continues to be talked about and yearned for by both locals and fans across the globe. To say Messi won plenty of titles in the red and blue would be a major understatement to all. He would rack up an incredible 35 trophies while with them, capturing 10 La Liga titles, 4 Champions League crowns, 7 Copa de Reyes, 8 Spanish Super Cups, 3 Club World titles and 3 UEFA Super Cups as well. Two particular seasons though stand head and shoulders above the rest. Those were the treble years. The years in which he helped lead the team to a near perfect season in which they won every title on offer. This treble meant he won the Spanish league title, the Champions League and the Copa del Rey twice. The first season in which he did this was 2008-09, to an effective and impressive player already, he wasn't legendary as of yet but he was well and truly on his way at the age of 21 by helping steer Barcelona to the treble. Across that campaign, he would tally up 38 goals while dishing out 28 assists in those three aforementioned competitions alone. Two highlights were his performances against Real Madrid in La Liga and against Manchester United in the Champions League final. Against Los Blancos, Messi scored two goals and had an assist as his side thumped their arch rivals 6-2 in romping towards the title. His goal meanwhile in the final against Sir Alex's Red Devils helped them clinch the Champions League title, handing him his first European Cup in the process. As if his legendary status wasn't already locked in, Messi would one-up this feat six years later as he led a new look Barcelona to a second treble. Messi compiled a ridiculous total of 58 goals 
and 42 assists in all competitions in that particular season, showing he was at the peak of his considerable powers, even in a team that also contained Neymar and Luis Suarez. One of the finest showings of his season came in the semis of the Champions League, in which he helped plunge an extremely talented Bayern Munich squad to defeat. Messi scored twice and recorded an assist in the first leg at the Camp Nou as part of a late show to essentially kill off the tie before it headed to Germany. While things went well for him club-wise, it wasn't perfect for him internationally. His Argentine national team experienced another heartbreaking setback in what could have been an otherwise perfect year across 2014-15 season when they were beaten by Chile in that summer's Copa Americas final. Messi had pushed his team toward the final via a three assist showing versus Paraguay in the semis, but the Chileans held firm in the final and forced extra time and penalties before outlasting their blue and white clad foes. Had Argentina won and snapped up a long trophyless spell at senior level, perhaps Messi would have eclipsed his previous best season. The best season we refer to is that of 2011-12 in which Messi cemented his status as the greatest of all time candidate. When it comes to team honours, it wasn't his very best, though he did haul in the Copa del Rey, Spanish Super Cup and UEFA Super Cup. Instead of club honours, it was his individual performances that made an unforgettable season. Messi would score an outlandish and unheard of 91 goals in that calendar year with 79 of them coming for Barcelona and another 12 hitting the net for Argentina. 91 goals in just 69 games is unheard of, with Messi clocking in well over a goal 1.3 per game to be exact, as well as an average of one goal every 66 minutes. To pull that off, you're obviously not going to find the net in every game, regardless of who you are or how good you are. So you'll need to score multiples in some games, and that is what La Puga did. Messi bagged 22 games with 2 goals and 9 games with a hat-trick in that absurd campaign, underlining his ability. He was more likely to score twice than he was to not score at all, making it the season of dreams in many regards. With that slew of goals flying in, he was able to break the long-held record of Bayern Munich striker Gerd Müller. Müller had amassed 85 goals for both Bayern and Germany back in 1972, but Messi blew that out of the water with his performances nonetheless. At 25 years of age, Messi was still not even technically at his peak, either hinting that more was to come. While he didn't hit those crazy heights individually again, he remains a remarkably influential footballer. One of the few things that held Messi back from being truly immortal was his lack of titles for his country. Sure, he had helped lead Argentina to glory in youth championships previously, but he was unable to capture an international title of major repute, causing many to laud his rival Cristiano Ronaldo as the greatest due to his success with Portugal. Messi would finally overcome this hurdle in 2021, helping his beloved Argentina to their first major title since the 1990s when they hoisted the Copa America trophy. Maradona had led Argentina to the World Cup in 1986 and to many that made him immortal, despite his shortcomings when it came to pure numbers against Messi. But Messi and co were tired of falling short of their goals on the international stage leading up to that tournament and it showed. They had lost three consecutive finals back in 2014, 2015 and 2016 and they got over the hump in the sweetest of fashions by fending off South American rivals Brazil to raise the trophy. Messi co-led the tourney for most goals with four along with Luis Diaz and was named co-player of the tournament along with Neymar. He had five assists in those seven games, setting the table for his victory alongside his former Brazilian teammate. Messi, however, still had one more big, big job to pull off 
if he wanted to be among the pantheon of footballing gods, winning the World Cup. Though he had finally taken Argentina to glory in the Copa America, he still had the job of winning the big one to solidify his standing as one of the very best. 2022 always seemed like it would be his last realistic chance. Even with modern medicine and football being the way it is, he would surely be too old to be his usual self come 2026 in North America. So, his shot at glory in Qatar was the time to do it. The wacky Winter World Cup got off to a poor start for him and his side as they fell in their first match to Saudi Arabia. The shock defeat though seemed to galvanize the squad and cause them to play with an urgency that may have been lacking had they have not been beaten in such a dramatic fashion. Messi added to a penalty in the first game with a goal in their second affair, and his side advanced from their group in first despite their slow start. From there, Messi's magical run began as he strolled toward the golden ball for the best player of the tournament. He would notch 7 goals and 3 assists total in the run to the final. It was in that final that he really showed out, dueling head to head with PSG teammate Kylian Mbappe, as Argentina fended off France in penalties to take the day. Messi scored from the spot to open the scoring and also had a goal 12 minutes from time that seemed to have won it for him and his side, only to see it slip through their fingers again. He would step up again however in penalties, taking Argentina to immortality along with himself in the process. If you're posting the kind of numbers that we've talked about and putting the absurdly consistent performances Messi has, you are only naturally going to open yourself for individual awards and plaudits. Messi has won the award for the best player in a calendar a captivating nine, yes, nine times. The name might have changed from Ballon d'Or to FIFA the best and back again, but no mind that. La Pulga has done something very few could have ever dreamed of by nearly monopolizing the award along with Cristiano Ronaldo over the years. Ronaldo, in another era, would likely have won nearly every individual honor available to him, so it makes it even more impressive that Messi was able to eclipse him and steal a march to take these trophies from his fellow superstar. Messi's first Ballon d'Or came in 2009 when he had that treble winning season. That followed up his first nomination two years prior and just so happened to be the start of an illustrious run. Messi has sometimes won the award somewhat controversially, but most recently he was given the best player title due to leading Argentina to World Cup glory. It's hard to argue with that, even if his showings with the Parisians were a bit lacklustre. Conseguir todo con la selección, como siempre lo soñé, conseguir todo en, en, el, en mi carrera, en el Barcelona, en, mi, en, en lo individual. But the book of Messi isn't quite done yet. While he may be on the tail end of his career, the legend is still at it in Major League Soccer, tearing apart defenses with his precision like it was 2012 again. Following his departure from PSG, the star landed at David Beckham owned Inter Miami. Y simplemente yo vine acá a jugar, a seguir disfrutando de, del fútbol, que es lo que, lo que me gustó toda, toda la vida. Messi was coming into a team that was dead last in MLS, and many questioned the impact he could have. Right away though, he's been an absolute treat, leading them to League's Cup glory over both American and Mexican sides. Messi found the net nine times in his first six outings in the pink of Inter Miami putting to rest any doubts he'd be phoning it in on a vacation on South Beach. So, while Messi might have compared to others, there really just is no comparison. There has been no player like him in the past, and there is unlikely to be anyone with the same kind of impact as him again. 
while many might have assumed his career was over, it looks like he's just gone from strength to strength with Inter Miami. His consistent greatness will never be forgotten, setting him apart from those that have come before. His legend will live on, both in clip and word form. And we wouldn't have it any other way.